in, in order to facilitate a debate, and when your party and others are categorizing the president this way, and by the way, he's not exactly been St. Francis responding in kind, we are never going to get anything done on this issue, I, Neil, I think he's a cruel, cold con artist who only changed the policy because people, and you Republicans and Democrats, that spoke man. up. You want to negotiate with that man and say he's a cold, cruel con artist. You called me that, uh, Congress. I say, I'm not going to negotiate no. Twinkies with you. You know, that's what hurts the debate, right? Uh, Neil, th this man, it cruelly separated kids from their parents, put them in cages, and now wants a medal because he, he reversed doesn't the policy? Know. He doesn't, doesn't want to know. And back and forth they went. And one of the things I was trying to get, get to here with a good congressman from California is this uh, inability, this intractability of such a word for the two sides to get together when they say hard things about each other. But referring to the president of the United States that he hates kids, that he's cold and cruel and a con artist. How, are you going to sit down with the other side when they're that mindset? I mean, and back and forth we go. Uh, so the president's view has been, of course, uh, we'll wait till after the midterms. Drop this uh, obsession of trying to get something done with immigration now. Just, just uh, put it on ice and see what happens. I, I wonder if Republican California Congressman Dana Rohrbach agrees with that. Congressman, what do you think? The president is probably hearing and seeing a lot of this stuff and saying it's not worth it. Wait until after November. But things conceivably could be even worse for your party after November. Well, he's pre the president's very wise in understanding that there is not a consensus in this Congress of what to do on this issue, and there's not even a consensus within the Republican Party. So let's focus on what we can get done. So I think the president has shown himself to be, again, to be very wise in those type of decisions. But let, let us note, he also recognizes the Democrats are playing the, 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 the worst kind of political games with these young people. The fact is that this is the same policy that was in place for eight years under Obama, and they didn't mention one word of it. Not, not one protest came out of him, but when it's Trump who's president, all of a sudden he's mean-spirited for continuing the Obama policy. Well, you know, they draw the distinction that uh, President Obama didn't take it to the level this president did. And frankly, you're right to argue that there's hypocrisy on, on both sides here. But I, I think what's, what's being questioned now is the president did cave, if you want to say that, to demands. He'd do something uh, uh, in an executive action, as he did signing executive order to stop this separating kids from their parents. But he also pointed out that Democrats got to do something next, or you guys got to come up with something substantial here, substantive here, that would avoid well, this whole debate. And it doesn't look, to your point, and certainly to the Democratic congressman's point, like you are, because you guys are just miles apart and hate each other. Well, the president tried to make sure that the Democrats could not use these kids in this I would say a very despicable way using these young people to use them as leverage for their own political gain. And that's what was happening. The president recognized it. It was getting in the way of dealing with, with the issue. So he, uh, he made the right decision. It was a, it was a rational All decision. All right, look, it, it seems like you're saying, like, in the interim, it's going to be impossible to come up with something. So even this legislative, with this mo moderate approach, I guess, that was cobbled together by those working closely with Speaker Paul well, Ryan, that's put off till at least next week, maybe beyond. Yeah. Right. Well, the American people have got to speak up, and, and quite frankly, uh, I have no doubt that the American people do not want to have this massive flow of illegal immigration into our country. And if we begin to give amnesties to different groups in our country who are here illegally, we're doing nothing but inviting people, especially parents from around the world, to so get amnesty is the drawing line for you. Here. Amnesty, or at least anyone right. who's here now who shouldn't be here now, you want out. No, I don't want them granted amnesty. And how we, we approach them at that point, okay, let's talk about it. But they should not be given l any legal status. If we do, it is a message to er millions of no, people. No, I, 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 I want to be clear because there are, are some differences in how you word that. Now, when you mm -hmm. say you don't want amnesty, what about a path right. to amnesty, a path? To citizenship. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Amnesty is changing a legal, someone who is here illegally, giving them a legal status is amnesty. I know, no, I understand that, sir, but citizenship to the path is to not. that, to the path 
to, to getting to that? I mean, is no, it... no, the path is you can't give, if you say, oh, well, during this time period, you're here legally, you have given them a legal basis to be here. You've told everybody overseas, get over to the United States as soon as you can. So the ones who are here illegally now and those who you would put on a path to citizenship, you would be against that because they are here illegally and, and you're not going to grant them amnesty, so right. no path to citizenship, right? Well, we, we actually are, are spending billions of dollars that should go to our veterans, should go to our own children, our own families, our own health care for our own citizens. We're doing that for people who are here illegally. You give them any type of legal status, they can they can start taking more of that money. Why are we going to bring more people in So what happens to them? I just want to be clear because I, I did, I heard quite the opposite from the Democratic congressman here. And believe me, I'm trying to broker a deal here. I'm just trying to understand where there might be similar light on both sides. There's not much well, from what I can see. Well, what would you there, entertain here? Because the people who are here illegally, uh, you don't want amnesty. Uh, there's no path to citizenship for a group like that, so you kick them out? If someone is here illegally, they shouldn't be given a legal status. At that point, if they are caught here, they should be escorted out. There are millions now, of them. There are millions but, of them, right? But I think the most important thing that we could do, yeah, there are millions, because we have failed to do our job, and we're, and we're making to make it even worse so kick when them there out. are tens of millions kick because them out. of what we're doing now. No, I, I think the best way to do it is to have very heavy enforcement that they can't get jobs, so you have to have e-verify for everything, and they can't get any government benefits. And if you do that, I think most of these millions will leave because we aren't then paying their way to stay here. Uh, now, and whether it's you want to have a mass deportation, that's not what I'm advocating, but you certainly don't give them legal status so right. they get jobs and benefits. Congressman, thank you very, very much. You appear to be miles apart, but we'll All see right. anything could happen.